Oh, good morning. It's 6.40 and looking a lot clearer. Good morning, Caber. Good morning. <laughs> Last night after you fell asleep, I went to go to the bathroom and I saw a huge flash of lightning out that way. And uh, then I looked out towards the pass, the other direction we have to go over tomorrow, and it was just like covered in clouds. And I was like, oh fuck, we're gonna die. <laughs> we're, gonna get, we're gonna get zapped. Looking good now though. Headed up Kearsarge Pass. How are we feeling, Caber? Golden. <laughs> we got a 7.15 start. It's now probably 7.40. We're crushing it. Up and up into the clouds. There's University Peak. Looking epic. We're probably a thousand feet up from the trailhead. Making good progress. We're probably about halfway. Beautiful lake, a beautiful duck. The storm is a coming. It's about 9 15, 9 30. Uh, and we're almost at the pass, which is pretty impressive pace, I think. We got maybe 300 feet gain to the pass up there. But uh, we're feeling some raindrops. And we're gonna move it again. Caver, you looking great, my dude. The yellow and pink. <laughs> oh man, we timed this perfectly. Right as we're about to get over the pass. The storm is here. Uh, distance or time between these two videos that I've taken is like maybe two minutes. It has approached very quickly. Yoo-hoo! Here we go. So it's not raining too hard. There goes Cape Dog into the mist. We made the pass. Woohoo! It's raining harder. It's quite windy. Good times. <laughs> you know, perverse ways, very fun. It's mellowed out a little bit. Whew. We're now just hauling butt to Charlotte Lake, maybe two miles until there. So we should get to the lake before noon, which is pretty nice. Hopefully avoid the worst of the rain showers. Reminds me of hiking in the Pacific Northwest. Can't see the pinnacles. Good. He can't be captured. It's too beautiful. Just stunning. There's Bullfrog Lake down below. And then uh, Brewer and Northgard out across the canyon. We uh, are on the pass between Bullfrog and Charlotte Lake. We're gonna try to find a campsite, I think up here perhaps. We'll see if there's water. All right, we found an excellent camp spot. We've put up our tarp. It hasn't rained since we got to, to this area. We're gonna set up our sleep stuff and enjoy the, oh, there's no view. There was like five minutes ago. <laughs> the clouds have been kind of coming in and out. Trust me, it's beautiful. This might be one of the most beautiful scenes that I've ever had the privilege of enjoying. So stunning.
it has begun. I had to retreat quickly from my blissful lookout. Gabriel was just here sleeping. The time is 5.10. We are in a cloud just below Bullfrog Lake filtering water. I have been laying down for the past five hours and it took a lot of willpower for us to get up and come down to get water. We were debating whether to just die up there. <laughs> Honestly? Well, that was day one. <laughs> Good times. Tomorrow we're gonna do a ridge scramble. Good night. Well, good morning. There's ice on the outside and inside of our tarp. It got pretty cold. It's uh, 6.30 a.m. And we're getting going. There's Caber's butt. All right, let's shake it off. Early morning start, making our way up the pass. What pass? Glen Pass. Glen Pass. There's Charlotte Lake down there. Probably camp there tonight. And we have our first view of Charlotte Dome. We're gonna climb that tomorrow if I go as well. Ooh, little pike. Uh, it's my first one this season I've seen. Hey, buddy. You're cutie. You're just chilling there. Oh, 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 oh. Stay, go, stay, go, oh. Okay, it is 8.20. We're almost at Glen Pass. We've come up from down there. Our plan for today is to go up to Glen Pass and then start a big ridge traverse. Mount Rixford onto Falcor, perhaps, then to Mount Gold, then to Dragon Peak, and then back. In total, it should be about a 10 mile day with give or take 4,000 feet elevation gain. There's our lake we just filled up at, at down there. Got an amazing view out at Mount Brewer, North Guard. Really want to summit those someday. Thanks, Gaver. We're at the pass. We got Cotter and Clarence King out there. Down into Ray Lakes. There's Dragon Peak out there. We might summit that at the very end of our traverse. We'll see if the weather holds. That's really the de determining factor. Will the weather be okay? This is our ridge we're about to scramble. So it begins. Well, conditions are suboptimal. Everything is pretty slippery, either from wetness or ice like there. Um, it's like class two and a little bit steep at times, but easy. It's just that you can't trust the friction. It's a little bit frightening. These flowers are just totally frozen. Poor guys. Approaching the summit, Glacier Spike is the first one. Going down in last year. Fine. We're almost at the summit. I think that's it. You can see our next destination, Rixford, there. Some decent exposure on this little sidewalk. Oh, rockfall. Right off of there. Right off the I could see it. Close to the pass. It's definitely gotten steep. I would say it's like class three plus. Yeah. Maybe class four. I would say it's class four. There's Charlotte Dome up there. Here's the pass we came up. We're at the summit of Glacier Spike. We can't get the, oh, we got the register open. 
probably about class four the way we did it. There's our next objective, Mount Rixford. We are the first people up here this year and it's September 14th. I guess not a very popular peak. It's so slippery though, it's just ice on granite. It's quite, <laughs> quite treacherous. Great conditions right now. There's Glacier Spike there. We just made it to this saddle here. And we're going up to Rixford, which is behind this sub peak. It'd be loose. Almost have caused like a number of legitimate rock slides. <laughs> it's quite loose. We're getting close to the summit. I think that's it. Here was about to join me near the summit. Got just some seep class three, a little bit loose on some of these huge blocks, which is frightening at times. Mount Rixford. Oh yeah. Wow, wow. That's Falcor. We could do that or we'd skirt it up to gold and then over to Dragon and then back. You can see all the way to Mount Whitney. That's Whitney way out there. This little nub is the peak I was really fascinated by yesterday. <laughs> it's just a little nub on a ridge compared to everything else around. Okay, Caber signed the register. Now we expect another choss pile down to Falcor. Caber just knocked a rock off. <laughs> Everything is Jussie. Everything is Jussie when you're part of this team. Scramble up that quartz and then go along the ridge line. Yeah, let's do that. Falcor looks sick. The dikes are incredible. There's Rixford. Some cool towers. Quite an epic northwest face of uh, Falcor. Scary exposure. We're going up this gully. Summit in view. We were just over there. Went down this ridge. There's Bullfrog Lake. And now we are going up some class two to get up to the top of Falcor. There goes Eric. Eric scrambling up the fourth class, maybe low fifth class. Don't try this at home, kids. It's easy, but just like some of the rocks kind of hard to trust. Weather has been stable. Here's Caber, about to finish up that steep class four section. Then we have to figure out what the heck to do next. It's pretty intimidating. We have traversed across as to avoid this fourth and fifth class stuff. This is our line going up this. There he is, Eric Free Solo Meyer, crushing, crushing some third class. Third class. Kind of fourth class. You're doing great. Nice, Eric.
it's kind of thin. Go for it. Not feeling it. Just soloed. What Caver's doing now? Trust those feet. Yeah, Caber, come on. <laughs> Take your time on this part, okay? What the fuck? Yeah, it's a good jam there. Yeah. And like stem. Nice, dude. Yeah. Keep that hand jam. There's a jug rail up above your head. Up above. Right there. Up above. Yep. To the right's better. Yeah, I don't want to go. I'm not sure. <laughs> Hell yeah, Caber. We're at the summit. Hell yeah. Woo! That was real. Good shit, dude. Yeah, for sure. What would you grade that? Like five, five, six? Yeah, five, six. Five, six, five, seven. Oh, I mean, dude. mentally it felt like five, eight, but realistically probably five, six. Realistically, can just scramble down on the idea. Yeah. Oh yeah, dude. I put the crack gloves on for that one. I mean, what did you think about that summit? A little sketchy, but <laughs> yeah. now I got a clear shot down, so we yep. don't have to reverse what we did. About to go out to Mount Gold, maybe to Dragon Peak after. Uh, so far, though, Falcor, coolest summit we've done yet. Definitely. The 5-6 um, uh, Deathfall line that we t they soloed was maybe not the correct way. It was reported Class 3, and that was very far from Class 3. Um but exhilarating, and we've made it. Okay, on our way now to Mount Gold. Yeah, buddy. No, most, no more soloing, I think. Yeehaw. Falcor is really sick. That's not even the summit, that's a sub peak. <laughs> Woo! <sighs> Going across this bowl. Gold's up there. Summit in sight. Almost there. Caber's almost at the summit. Here comes Eric, scrambling up some third class, class three, to get to the summit block. Almost up. Peak number what, four? Peak number four of the day. Man 
dismantling the summit block. Well done. Third register of the day. There was not one on Falcor. Even though it's our favorite summit. There's University Peak, which we saw on the way up through Kearsarge. We camped down there. That open area. Thanks, Gabriel. We're now deciding whether or not to do this heinous looking ridge to Dragon Peak there, the one with the white dikes. Um, the only consideration is time. We're feeling good physically, but it's about 3 p.m. Uh, I've been hanging out at the summit for about 20 minutes here at Gold. Uh, we've been moving fast. I mean, we left the trail at that pass at uh, about 9.15, 9.30. So just about five hours to uh, do this entire traverse of multi-mile. Well, we are deciding not to do Dragon Peak. Since we are gonna do Charlotte Dome tomorrow, we don't wanna burn ourselves out or get back to camp super late and have like really late dinner. So either way, it's a great day. Dragon Peak will have to wait. It's close enough to the trailhead that you could do it in a day anyway. Just be a really big day hike. Gotta go all the way back down there. Got pretty cold last night. Okay, we're on our way down now. Down to Kearsarge Pass Trail. It's looking heinous. What is that? <laughs> Ever graceful. Oh yeah. That's the good stuff. Keep it up from that. There's Falcor looking epic. One of those cracks up there near the right of the summit, we almost died on. We didn't almost die. Yeah, we didn't almost die. We were under control. Totally Everything under control. was under control. We knew exactly what we were doing. Look how green it is. It's beautiful. All right, we are back at camp and gonna move to Charlotte Lake so we get an easier start tomorrow on Charlotte Dome. About less than a mile, 400 feet lost to the lake. We made it to Charlotte Lake. Making food, chefing it up at camp. All right, Caber. <laughs> Last video of the day. Highlight and low light for you. Highlight was Falcor. Low light was realizing how much uphill we're gonna have to do on the last day to get. Oh uh, yeah, I agree with both of those. Yeah, Falcor was pretty intense and quite fun, quite engaging. Low light on the ridge was definitely Mount uh, Rixford. That was just a kind of boring class two loose slog. Mm. <clears throat> Glacier spike was really cool, but scary in how icy everything was <laughs> and on our exposed moves that we were doing. And um, gold was a nice little summit block beyond that. It was just a walk. But yeah, Falcor, highly recommend. All right. Good night. Tomorrow, Charlotte Dome. It's early morning. It's really cold. Uh, we wanted to get started earlier, but we just couldn't bring ourselves to get out of the sleeping bag. Uh, it's all frosted on the ground. We're headed off to Charlotte Dome. There she be. Charlotte Dome. Wow, wow. We're at 
almost the base of Charlotte Dome. Incredible views across the canyon. And here is our dome. We're climbing around on the other side of it, so we have to skirt around this slab here. And hopefully not tumble all the way down thousands of feet below. Check out that waterfall. Approaching via the slab. Trying not to die. It is a bit of a tumble if you were to slip, but it's a uh, really grippy granite. All right, we're at the base of the route. We're looking good. We got probably more gear than we need. I'm gonna lead the first pitch, which is Cruxy at 5-4 up to that tree. Okay, just finished pitch two. Uh, this is my first ever multi-pitch gear anchor. Ooh-wee. Caber says it looks good. Here we are at the top of pitch four. I'm belaying Eric up a 5-5 chimney to a layback, and then eventually up to the slot. Great day for climbing Charlotte Dome. I'm at the top of pitch four up this 5-5 easy chimney. Cabers are belaying me. We kind of combined a couple pitches here, so this is technically our start of our fourth pitch was down there. Uh, Caber led the last one, which is quite the route finding uh, feat. Oh, there's a nut here. And uh, going up to the 5 8 slot up there. We're at the slot pitch, 5 8. Here's my nut anchor. Caber is following what I led. Very easy, like five, 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 six. And Caber's trying to get this nut out that was uh, stuck in a crack. Someone left behind from before. Amazingly beautiful day. Perfect conditions. Okay. I'm about to leave this slot. Ruxy 5-8. Frickin' gorgeous out here. Alright, camera.
gemaakt hoor. It says, Gabriel and I at the top of pitch five. I don't even know anymore. Just led one of the five eight pitches. Uh, having a great time. Gabriel's about to do this traverse pitch, uh, and I'm filling him really well. Beautiful. 
beautiful out here. Just wow. There goes Kaber. A pitch. Well, seven for us, eight for most people. Crushing. Kaber just let this. 5.8 pitch 8. It's supposed to be a kind of awkward crack. Here we go. Alright, Caper just climbed this pitch. Progress. There's a bomber anchor that can rain. One cam. One swing. Just like they teach you. We're at the Furrows Pitch. One of the famous ones. Kim is about to lead it. I'm uh, hanging out. Partway through the Furrows Pitch. Crazy cool features, just like parallel arets with big juggy holds. It's really cool with uh, exhilarating exposure. I mean, just look at this. So cool. Woo. Okay, we just did the furrows. Here's the bomber, as camera says, patent pending, single cam, one sling of a horn anchor, bomber, cool exposure, classic pitch, favorite of the day so far, super freaking cool. Like amazing arete stemming and like big jugs and just a great position. Uh, wow pitch, for sure. Big wow pack. Yeah, got, I'm glad Caber got to lead it when I led the uh, other named pitch to the slot. Now we have maybe like a pitch to go to the top. It's uh, about almost 5 p.m. One final pitch, the Dick Long pitch. Right up there. Yeah, buddy. And we're finished. I can disassemble this final anchor. Caber's coiling the rope with an amazing view behind him. And we're about to scramble the class three up to the summit proper of Charlotte Dome. Now that is a summit block. We'll see if we can even make it up this thing. Got some Good exposure too. Summit slot as well. Charlotte Dome Summit attained. We're signing the register. It's the fourth one we've signed on this trip out of five summits. A little bit hazy down into Kings Canyon Sequoia, or rather just Kings Canyon proper. What a climb. There's Mount Gardner. This is the U-shaped uh, valley that we approached from. Charlotte Lake is in there. Mount Bago on the right. And out there, that uh, black and white striped area, 
That is Glacier Spike. And the taller peak on the right is Mount Rixford. We just did that ridge traverse yesterday. And you can see our shadow. Maybe if I wave, you'll see me. Nope. <laughs> oh, yeah. <sighs> East Vedette. University Peak. Oh, I forget the name of this one. Aramaric? I forget. Parkuhar, or however you pronounce it, and uh, North Guard and Brewer. Good stuff. It's certainly not your typical summit for a dome. It's more of a spire, really. We're about to descend, I think, down this ridge and then off through the trees there. Back to Charlotte Lake. For sure a scrambly descent, but nothing like we did yesterday. This is the spring we fill up water at. I thought it was just a river. I'm gonna take a shit right here. Headed back to camp. Getting dark on us. Okay, we're back at camp, finally eating food. Maybe I didn't really stop to eat food at all today. Okay, we got a ramen bomb. Oh, my hands are so cold. <laughs> it's really, really cold. And we're gonna go to bed. Recap of the climb tomorrow. Good night. morning of day four we've got some neighbors <clears throat> we're packing up just getting nearly as cold last night as the night before because our feet aren't completely numb and uh not everything froze over drs amazon 16 dollars weighs, weighs less than an ounce <laughs> also if you get it too hot it melts itself <laughs> Also, Eric hasn't broken it. <laughs> unlike like something. Unlike that. <laughs> Sorry, Kaver. <laughs> Recap of yesterday. We woke up at 6 a.m. Didn't get moving until 7 a.m. <laughs> and it was cold as balls. Took us three hours to get to the base of Charlotte Dome. Because we had to poop. Because we had to poop and filter water. We did not get an early start on the climb. And then it took us... Eight hours to climb 12 pitches. <laughs> well, from what, like 9.30 to 6? We summited at 6. 5.30. <laughs> yeah. Eight hours. Eight hours. <laughs> I mean, Camper's just so freaking slow as a climber. <laughs> I was like speed climbing that stuff, and Camper's out here. What a Gumby. Favorite pitch? Least favorite pitch? Furrows. Kaver likes favorite. the furrows. My least favorite were the first two. Yeah. I think my least favorite was actually that second 5-8 pitch that you led. Um, I thought it was fun. <laughs> it was just weird and awkward. It kind of, I don't know. I climbed it like a face climb and put gear in. <laughs> I was climbing like an off with. I was heel toe camming. That's why I didn't have fun. My favorite was probably the furrows that Kaver led. Or the last pitch I led was like a mini furrows, and that was super cool. Uh, I think I also really dick long. Huh? <laughs> dick long. The dick long pitch. Uh, the summit was spectacular, um, and this trip has been surprisingly successful. <laughs> really? No, I. I mean, I thought coming in when we were driving we're in, locked. driving in through Bishop and Yosemite, it was like crazy rain and thunderstorms the first day out here was not that much better um but it's been like amazing conditions the last two days for summiting uh and now we gotta hike out all the way from charlotte lake to over kearsarge pass back to the car beautiful early morning Our legs are really tired, 
But we're trying to truck up to Kearsarge Pass. Oh, we'd be struggling. Final 200 feet of the pass. Back at Kearsarge Pass. One final look back towards the west. You can actually see Charlotte Dome. That little nub out there. Who would know that there's a classic 1500 feet climb on that? Down we go. Made it here in two hours. Here we are at the top of Kearsarge Pass. Bright, sunny day, unlike when we came out when it was cloudy and you yeah. could barely see 20 feet ahead of you. Any final words, Eric? Good trip. My legs are tired. <laughs>